Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nate, and today I'm going to be showing you how I create relief style maps using Incarnate. So we're going to first start with land masses. Either trace or draw the coastlines of your land mass. You do this using the mask tool, and I would recommend putting your land in the foreground. This tool can be selected um, from the shovel icon on the left. You can see it highlighted in yellow in my workspace here. So to get the effect that we're looking for, I recommend changing a couple of the advanced settings for this. So this will require the pro version of Incarnate. Um, I would first start by removing the outlines, shadows, and ripples, and reduce the stroke of the mask tool to about 0.5. Um, and then go ahead and change the color to something dark just to give it a little more crisp, clean kind of edge to our land mass. So as you're working your way through this, I would recommend keeping the size of the mask tool pretty small. Um, you need to remember that you want to add some detail, and this will give you that ability, but also keep in mind that if you're looking at a very large map, so something that represents something like a continent or even a country, your coastlines are pretty zoomed out and you're not going to see as much detail in this type of map. So it can look a bit arbitrary or forced if you have too much um, deviation or kind of um, texture or details to your coastline. So things are more zoomed out like a country or nation, um, you'd want to keep it smooth, but then if you are doing like with a smaller area, you could add a little bit more complexity and detail to your coasts. So just keep that in mind as you're going, just kind of give it a more realistic feel. You can see me working through this process here on my own map. So here I'm tracing the outline of my continent, Capus. So this is coming from my homebrew world, so this is a map that had already existed. So I'm using a stamp as a reference point to kind of do the tracing. I wanted to keep some continuity between my maps, and since I plan on doing this with other portions of my world, I wanted to use um, a reference to keep the scale relative across all of them. So as we're finishing up tracing those coastlines, you want to go back and start filling this in. So I increase the size of my mast a little bit and start tracing the coast again and filling in more this time. I have found that this just makes it easier to kind of block in these areas first and then come back in with an even bigger swash of the masking tool to fill in the center of the continent or the land mass. Our next section here is going to be working on the topography. So to start, you're going to want to pick a color that's going to represent like your moderate elevation to act as the base um, of your map. So before we get into that, let's just do a quick review of relief style maps. So relief refers to changes in elevations in a map relative to some scale. In most cases, that scale is relative to either sea level or the lowest point on the area of interest. In most 2D relief maps, it's common to use a heat map or variations in color and or shade to note this change in elevation. Here, I'm going to be using a scale of green to red to denote lower to higher elevations. So when I was picking my moderate level, I tried to think of something that looked good between them and reviewed some actual world world topography maps. And what I found was kind of this green to yellow to red um, give me the kind of scale that I found visually um, appeasing. So the color colors are completely up to you. I just like the scheme. And I think it's more of a traditional feel for the map. Once you've picked your color scheme for your relief map, we're going to want to go ahead and start layering in those colors to start building out our topography. We're going to be using the brush tool to do this. The brush tool can be found on the left, just below the mask tool that we used previously. It looks like a little paintbrush, and I again have it here highlighted in yellow on my workspace. Here I'm going for a kind of a beige cream color that sits somewhere between that green and that red. Um, but it's not exactly the yellow I'm going to use for moderate. This is more of just the base color I'm going to be painting over. So I go ahead and choose that and I apply it across the whole map. So now that we got the map colored in with our base, um, we want to go ahead and pick that color that's going to represent our lower elevation. So again here I'm going to be using green. Um, and you can see me play around with that for a little bit, just trying to choose the exact color I want. But once I decide on it, you'll want to go ahead and drop the opacity of the texture to something low. So to drop the opacity, go ahead and look on the left under the brush tool settings. So just under size, you'll see a half filled raindrop. That's where you're going to want to adjust the opacity. So here I set mine down to 0.1, so this is pretty low, and I'm just going to start layering in to give the suggestion of that green color and for me to start getting an idea of where I want to place these colors to give the topography I want. 
Uh, you also are going to want to select the edge setting under the shape. This is uh, actually the top of the window next to the circle. It looks kind of like a blobby star. So by selecting this edge setting, um, what it's going to do is give your brush a little bit of more irregularity to the strokes so it doesn't look as uniform. So here I go ahead and reduce the smoothness or the feature size down to three. So it doesn't add too much irregularity, um, but just even at three, this goes a long way for not making the lines um, naturally smooth. So once you get those all set up, go ahead and start adding and applying this to some of the areas of low elevation. I would recommend it's easiest to kind of start with the coastline. So in my case, there are some islands. Um, and so as we're going to know, these are going to be some of the lowest parts from that near the coast. So a very important note to keep in mind here is that when using the brush tool with reduced opacity, there's some rules that apply. When you first click and hold the brush, it'll apply that texture at its opacity anywhere you drag it until you release it. If you repeat this in a new area where you haven't brushed yet, it'll apply the exact same color at that opacity. However, if you brush over an area that that texture is already placed, it will actually add the two strokes together. Um, you can see this here where I start to layer deeper and deeper into the island, giving the islands the appearance of lower elevation near the coast and rising towards the center. So if you continue to brush over that same spot, the strokes will continue to add and add until they reach some maximum, which is dependent on the current opacity of the brush. So brushing over 10 times with a 0.1 opacity brush would not necessarily give you the same result as brushing over two times with a 0.5 opacity. The 0.1 opacity will actually cap out before it gets as high as the 0.5 just due to how these brushes work. So you need to keep that in mind. So we're gonna use this rule to build out topography. We're gonna start with low opacity, small strokes, and we're gonna layer over them iteratively increasing the opacity and the number of strokes to go to create either lower green elevations or higher red elevations by increasing the, the darkness of those respective colors as we add more strokes. So as I wrap up the first set of green layering, um, and then we'll move on to the yellow and red textures I've selected to start building out some of the moderate and high um, topography we're looking at here and keep in mind I haven't finished with green They've, I laid down an initial set to give an idea of where everything is from a low elevation standpoint and now I'm gonna do that same thing with the yellow just kind of blocking in where I want the kind of elevation changes in my map to be taking place and we're still doing this at low opacity so as I move to red, what I'm now doing is blocking in mountains. So again, I'm using a previous map as a reference point. So I had set a low opacity stamp behind it just so I can keep an idea of where those mountains were placed on the original map. And then I started kind of laying those on the left side of my continent here. Um, so again, just tracing in the suggestion of these mountains so I kind of have an idea of how to start blending these colors together and then finding ways to kind of um, transition them and outlining the major shapes that I want. So now that I have all that blocked out, we're gonna move on to the iterative process of now increasing the opacity of the brush, moving back to green, and starting to layer again. So what I want to do is go back to the coast because we know the are lowest and start making my way inwards, and also focusing on those rivers and valleys I've already kind of outlaid. A good way to add some complexity and texture to the map is also keep in mind of dry riverbeds. So think of places where the river could have existed previously or old branches that may have dried out and add valleys there by creating more green um, and darker greens to kind of highlight those changes in elevations and kind of give those valleys where no water actually still present. A pro tip from having to keep clicking over on the left hand side of the menu to change things like opacity and the size of your brush. Go ahead and memorize some of the keyboard shortcuts for controlling these. So W and D on your keyboard control the size up and down. And holding shift while these will actually makes it so it changes that size um, by a greater amount each time you click. Additionally, E and D can be used the same way for the opacity of the brush, which is useful as we start to increase the opacity. So you don't have to click around as much. You can just use the keyboard to kind of jump between opacities and sizes as you need them. So next, I'm moving on to yellow with the higher opacity starting to lay in, in the hills and the base of the mountains, and making sure to use the rivers as guides for where the troughs and valleys um, should exist between the mountains. 
Um, keep in mind that rivers tend to come from the mountain snow melts and follow a logical path of least resistance to lower elevations. So kind of keep that in mind as you're building up your yellows and reds and how they kind of um, digress into the greens of the valleys below. And so once you kind of get that transition area with the yellow, move on to some reds and start highlighting those higher elevations and building the steepness of your mountains. So as I do this, um, I'm not going to go through each step, but iteratively I kind of keep going through this more brush strokes and higher opacity, going up by about 0.1 opacity a time. And I, I think on this map I scale all the way up to um, 0.5 opacity at my highest point um, because I like the way it's looking and it seems to fit the topography and the scale of the area I'm working on. The goal is to kind of just do this again iteratively, slowly, um, and methodically. Don't don't be afraid to go back and blend with low opacities, kind of smooth those transitions. And keep in mind, it's always a great idea to save often. Here I'm cutting out a lot of the saves, um, but it's recommended that you should probably be saving about every 150 changes. And with this type of brush layering, you're going to be making that many changes pretty quickly um, because each stroke counts as a single change. And whenever you're about to do something drastic or change something in a large way, go ahead and save it. And if you're even more concerned, save a clone so you have um, kind of a running backup or partial maps you've already made. By the time I finish a map, I normally have at least five or six uh, partially made maps just at places I've made some kind of drastic change um, to the map and want to make sure I had a way of reverting back to a previous version in case there was an issue. So this last section is going to be doing something I call polishing. So what you want to do is also now pick the background color. So the background behind your map is going to be a solid color. And I've been preferring a paper-esque background, which there's a nice set of these in the parchment style maps. So you can choose that in your textures as one of your options. And just choose one that kind of fits the background you want and matches kind of the color scheme you've already chosen. And just take that and brush the whole background with it. Um, you don't have to be worried about it changing your map because the foreground and background are... Um, separate layers, so just make sure you're painting or texturing in the background layer. The other thing I did here was I went into the mask tool and changed the settings around the shadow. So I wanted to make sure it was casting a nice shadow in the background that kind of gives it an illusion of depth. Um, so you can play around with that to figure out how big the shadow is to be and kind of the blur and positioning of it, just kind of whatever meets your aesthetic. I also wanted to add some stamps to denote places of interest and locations like cities, towns, maybe some ruins or anything that your players might want. So I kind of had an idea what this were on my map just based on the original. Um, so I just used a blacked out stamp where I just dropped the brightness of the stamp to zero, which creates a perfectly black shape. I also decided to add in some labels. So I picked a font to kind of be the uniform text I used across all of them. I then also picked up a set of colors. So towns would be labeled a different color than mountains, which would be delivered in a different color than rivers. So kind of give that a little unique feel to those texts. So it's kind of easy for the reader to see what's being labeled. The last thing I did was make a scale. So this is gonna depend on if you're pulling from a map you've already made or make it a new one. If it's new one, it's easy. You just kind of come up with the rough scale of what you think the size of this landmass should be, or use um, you know reference from your other material if you've made other maps that include this area that you're building this one around. Here I already had one, so I go ahead and just pull over the stamp I'm using as a trace and copy that same scale. That way when I make other maps like this of my other locations, all of them will be on the relative same scale. Um, so there's no kind of weirdness in the size of things relative to each other between maps. So that's an overview of how I make my relief style maps in Incarnate. I really appreciate you watching. Um, I'll be trying to make more of these soon and can't wait to see what you all think of them. Please let me know in the comments on what you might want to see next or some other ideas you might have. And while you're there, please consider subscribing and liking. If you want to see more of my map content, check out my Patreon page and my Instagram accounts in the description. I post there all week and throw up a lot of free battle maps for my followers. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.